Welcome to the One Hero Podcast, where we answer Malaysians' burning questions about personal finance with fact-based answers. What are the bills you have to pay for, but inside your heart, you actually don't want to? They are your, none other than your water bill, your electricity bill, and one more, your gas bill. So welcome back to Financial Audit on One Hero, where we guide absolute beginners every step of the way in their investing journey. Saline is a Gen Z who started out only putting her money in fixed deposits. Since joining our series, she has learned that the different types of asset classes, how to source for market information, and even open her own brokerage account on Afin Huang. In our last episode of Financial Audit, we guided Saline through the process of analyzing Sime Darby. So today, we will be looking at Gas Malaysia for its investing potential. If you're interested to look at Saline's videos, you can check out the link in the description below. So welcome back to the show, Saline. Hi. She had to brave a two hour jam just to make sure that, and she had a dinner in a car, uh, Louis, just to make sure she made it on time. So kudos. Oh, I missed that part. <laughs> <laughs> what dinner did you have, Saline? Uh, microwave burger. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's so, from Thailand, so it's like, mm, mm, atas a bit. <laughs> atas a bit lah, uh, got premium, premium burger a bit lah. Uh. <laughs> no, next time, Saline, you know what you should have? You should get a Tesla full, self, full self-driven car. And then you can have like a pataya, nasi pataya in your car, you know, while the car is driving on its own. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a good idea, right? I can even sleep. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, it's not that, not that fast. The car's only moving, what, 20, 30 kilometers an hour anyway. <laughs> so it can take a one, uh, two, one, two hours nap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, Salin, you picked Guest Malaysia. Um, probably the rudimentary four questions that we have, and maybe you can take us through that. So, what do they do and uh what, what's the business they're in uh guess malaysia they develop operate and maintain and i if i'm not mistaken the way i read their business activity is like they are the middle person between getting the gas and then distributing to our consumers mm, okay cool how do we verify that let's 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 just say if that's that's uh, what you've read how how do you think what was the what would be the best way to verify that go to the uh, website okay cool so i'm bringing up the website of gas malaysia and surprise surprise it happens to be owned by our favorite malaysian businessman <laughs> uh mmc group um and uh you want to take a guess who owns MM- mmc group saline louis I don't know. Okay. Uh, he <laughs> also owns the uh, the rice mills of Malaysia. He also owns Port of Tangjong Pelepas. He also owns... Okay, I'm trying to think. Uh. So he owns the rice, he owns MMC, he owns Gas Malaysia, he owns Port of Tangjong Pelepas. And okay, his name is this guy. <laughs> Have you heard of him? He's actually from oh, your, your area actually. Your Penang Kedah area, Tan Sri Syed Mukta Al Buhari. Definitely owns something that I'm quite familiar with, but I cannot remember. Yeah, he owns a lot of things. Uh. Oh, <laughs> he owns a lot of things. Uh. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, uh, I, I forgot it was owned by MMC Guest Malaysia because I've, I've not looked in detail on this company before. But when I saw it just now, I was like, hmm, interesting. Yeah, MMC Group. Okay, cool. So we wanted to know what was the nature of their business, right? Natural gas di- distribution company, headquarters in Shalam, three regional office, Praia Gay Bank. Okay, so let's go and wiki. Actually, wiki sometimes can be a good source. Sell, market, distribute natural gas as well as develop, operate and maintain a natural gas distribution system network within Peninsula Malaysia. Okay, so you were saying that they actually become like a middleman and they actually transport to either residential or commercial. Yeah, I think you're right. They probably take natural gas from the offshore platforms or onshore platforms that the oil and gas operators uh, produce and they actually sell them uh, to the commercial and residential users. Uh. Okay. Obviously, the best way is to go to their website and ab- our business. There you go. Overview. Wow. There's actually an act, you know, Salin. There's, oh. there's actually a law. I just saw the act. <laughs> yeah, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. 
We are licensed under the Gas Supply Act 1993 to supply and sell reticled natural gas in Peninsular Malaysia. So you you kind of like from this one liner, you kind of like figure it out. They they are not in business in Sabah and Sarawak, and they only do in Peninsular Malaysia. Okay. Now what else? They uh, two entities wholly owned by Gas Malaysia, Gas Malaysia Distribution. Gas Malaysia Energy, 20 year to roll as gas to Okay, 2,600 kilometers of, wow. Okay. Shipping license, gas shipper, gas producer. Gas, okay, so you see, I think they, apart from the pipelines, I think they also do the canisters. Yeah. Yeah, the tong lah, right? Do you, do you remember what color? What, what color of cylinder do you use at home? Green color, if I'm not mistaken. Green, eh? yeah. yeah. Okay, sounds like it. Okay. So in the business, there's in the business of distributing, distributing and selling natural gas, they can become the middleman. Um, what's the next question that we should be asking? Are they profitable? Okay. Let's go to our favorite uh, screener, Gas Malaysia, detailed financials. Ah, let's plot it out. Huh? What do you think, Salin, as I'm plotting this out? Does it look, does it look okay to you? they look profitable yeah so the black is in profit let's look at their margins ah huh? gross margins oh they didn't put gross margins. straight away operating margins okay so let's look at operating margins and net margins so you've got a business that grew from four billion in sales to about 7.6 billion so there's almost double mm. okay uh profit from 165 million to 389 million uh. so margins have increased from four percent to about five so yeah you think it's, pro it's profitable right yeah okay let's look at cash flow then All right so profit is about let's say last 12 months is 386 mil 383 million sorry cash flow from operations topped out at about 680 million almost double of that of net profit why do you think their operating cash flow is uh, higher than net profit mm. i have also don't know because mm. i don't really understand their industry one of the why what what are the reasons why uh cash flow can be higher than that of uh net profit and it has something to do with accrual accounting oh like depreciation that's right you see how much are they adding back in depreciation uh? oh. quite a lot right oh. it's about 100 million uh? so let's let's think through uh, I, I i don't understand the business that well i'm not, not studied but if you are distributing gas and you have a pipe network, what are your assets? Your pipe and then the, pipes, the, the, the stations, machine. the machines, you know, the compressors and all that. Yeah. Do you think it's high capex or not? High, sorry? High capex, capital expenditure. Yes. Do you think it's a high, yeah. Because so, you need all the machinery, like correct, pump the machinery, gas into the tank. Correct. And you have all these pipe networks. So when you have a high capex business, and if you do accelerated depreciation, I don't know whether they do. Uh, it seems like they are writing back more and more in terms of depreciation. Uh, that's why actually cash cash flow from operations is high, you see. Ooh. You see where I'm coming from? Like DG, yeah. they do accelerated depreciation. They build a telecom tower, a cellular tower. Instead of depreciating against like 15 years, 20 years, which is the life of the, the tower, they depreciate in five years. Yeah. So what happens is when you depreciate a lot, your net profit goes down, but your operating cash flow as well, your operating cash flow is, is going to be high because you, you're actually not taking money out of pocket money. Think about it. You're just reducing the value of the assets. That's right. That's right. And you can write it down to zero on the balance sheet and you depreciate, but actually the, the asset life is still running. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, balance sheet, are they healthy? Okay. So... 680 million okay i'm going to clear all this so we can see this clearly so you've got cash about 678 million and total liability is about 1.9 billion okay total debt minus total cash plus short term they're actually in net cash because the cash and short term 
investments is way bigger than that of the total debt. Interesting, right? Yes. Yeah. So net cash company, <laughs> even the total liabilities look so high, but total liabilities is because they took they take they look at long term, short term, payables, all that kind of thing, like Everything, right? So, were you surprised with the numbers? A bit. A bit, right? Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I was I was a bit surprised with the numbers too. Okay. So next question. What's the next question? The next question is yeah, audience. Yeah. Who are the users? Okay. Basically so, their markets. Yeah. Who is the market? They already said that they only operate where? In Peninsula. Peninsula. Okay. What would increase the size of their market? Uh, if the consumer use more okay. of the yes yeah right who do you think will increase their consumption faster the residential users or the commercial users commercial users ah f and b f and b correct now if you think about rather than uh, your guests to your home you supply to more malls, more restaurants, you pipe them there and, 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 and uh, you encourage more F&B outlet, F, uh, let's say fast food, you know, KFCs and all that kind of guys. Definitely you get, you know, faster kind of consumption growth. Lah. What other things do you think besides F&B uh, can increase commercial usage? Mm, electric. They also need gases to generate electric. Very good. Power generation, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you can pipe this gas over to a power generation station, create electricity that, that creates demand. So how do you think we can verify? We may not be able to get a precise answer, but how do you think we can verify whether this market is growing or shrinking? You can indirectly verify maybe based on the electric consumption or the growth of FMB also. Ah, okay. And yeah, that, that's good. Any, any else? Anything else? Uh, if I cannot say resident area because they can substitute gas for electric. True, true, uh, true. Rather than indirectly, you are using electric generator from the gas. Correct, correct. Even though you may not use gas to cook, but you if you use an induction cooker, the the electricity power is coming from probably a generation station powered by a gas turbine, right? Let's see. Let's go do a direct Google search gas usage. In Malaysia, trend two zero two three. You never know. You never know. Okay, let's see. Uh, images. Huh. Malaysian natural gas consumption, nineteen seventy to twenty twenty three. It doesn't look like it's coming down. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on increasing. Yeah. So in in Malaysia, we consume. This is in what? I don't know what unit is this. 3.7, yeah, but what unit? Huh? Oh, this is in cubic feet, okay? Cubic feet per day, billion, okay? 4.8 cubic feet per day, billion in December. <coughs> Whatever we know, the trend is just going up. <laughs> it seemed to plateau 2021, 2022, but you know, 2023 numbers are not up yet. Okay, so we kind of like figure out the the growth rate is growing right more yeah. and more people are consuming gas rather than coil power whatever what's the next what's the last question so you've got the business that you've established their business you have, you have established their profitable healthy balance sheet they already have like a net cash position um consumption in malaysia seems to be growing up okay last question how cheap are they okay cool so coming back to ticker, we look at this thing called valuation. If you can see where my mouse is, okay. I'm gonna draw my draw this bigger so you guys can see. Okay. Now, if we look at valuation, let's plot out next 12 months PE, and we stretch it 10 years, and then we take last 12 months PE and we stretch it 10 years. So it's roughly about nine times to eleven times, I would say. Doesn't change much. Evaluation nine times to ten times PE. Okay. Let's see if they if ticker has competitors. Uh. Oh, really no one. <laughs> <laughs> one and only. So confirm your suspicion, you know. It's the one and only in Malaysia. Okay. So 
uh, let me see whether the Singapore Air Supply Company. Okay, private limited, private limited, private limited. Forget it. Okay, Thailand. ETT, public listed group SET, stock exchange of SE, SET stands for stock exchange of Thailand. Oh. Hmm. So I just want to plot and see the valuation, see how far is it from Gas Malaysia. <coughs> but here comes another problem. Huh? ETT may not just have gas to distribution business, they may have other businesses like Sandabi, lah, remember we talked about they have the healthcare. Yeah, the, the multiple industries. industries. Yeah, so that becomes like a conglomerate. So some businesses are more profitable, some of the divisions are less profitable. It gets commingled up and usually conglomerates have discount one. Like YTL, the value of the business is because got Rojak, right? Uh, they'll, mm -hmm. they'll discount down. Sam Dabi got Rojak, they'll discount down. Anyone that has a conglomerate, usually they, has a, they call it a conglo discount. Uh. Very funny. I don't know why. Yeah, it's just, just mixture, left pocket, right pocket, and it causes all this. Uh. So it looks like PTT seems to be cheaper than Gas Malaysia, you see? PTT on average is 8 to 9 times PE, uh, trailing as well as uh, uh, forward, you know? But Gas Malaysia is anywhere between 11 to about 12 times. You know? But it seems to be steady. Lah. So you, why, why do I look at this, Salin? Is because, oh, okay, let me stretch it a few years. Huh? Wow. It, it's gone up to 20 times before. Why do I try to look at it is, if I were to invest in Gas Malaysia, what kind of normal valuation should I be looking at? So I look at the band. You get what I mean? So if it's like, in the past five years, it hovers between uh, the low of 10 times and the high of 19 times. You get me over here? All right. mm -hmm. Oh, I can't. Can you, I'm highlighting this area here. Can you see? There's no highlighting. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, but I know where some more. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that I'm trying to look for a band where the PE is cheap and where the PE is expensive. And then when I buy, if I were to buy today, am I buying closer to the high side of the PE or the low side of the PE? Because I can never get the timing right, man. Correct or not, Salim? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but am I buying at a historical high or a historical low? Which, which, which part of the band am I buying? So it's like, you think of two lines, there's the high of the PE and then there's the low of the PE. Am I buying closer to the historical low or historical high? Uh, so uh, usually we buy closer to the historical low, right? Unless you want to be poor, then you buy the historical high. <laughs> <laughs> that's why, that's why when, when, when people say uh, buy low, sell high, ma, same for PE. Lo. You buy when the PE is low and you sell when the PE is high. Lo. Oh. Uh, so, will you buy? Mm, maybe. Maybe. Why would it be leaning more towards the yes and why would it be leaning more towards the no? It's like having a stable, stable you. Mm. Yeah. It doesn't fluctuate that much, except for these years, ah, which is 2015, 2014. Yeah, it'll be interesting to find out. All oh, these PTTs one. But you look at Gas Malaysia, right? Okay, let's 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 move PTT. Eh? PTT is orange, right? PTT is, yes, orange. Okay, let me re remove this. Huh? <laughs> if you look at Gas Malaysia, it's quite flat, you know. You notice that or not? It doesn't move that much. Probably at a high 19, 20 times, 27, okay, 27 times. But now it's coming down towards like 10 times, 15 times. So it's quite cheap historically. I mean, like on average PE, it was trading like 20 times, 25 times. And then now it's getting lower and lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. I mean, the band, if you look at the band, the high, the high was about 33 times. The low was probably about 11 times, and now it's going for about 10 times, 11 times. Yeah. So, so it's statistically, lower. it's low in terms of PE. Statistically, lah. Yeah. Not buy, sell, call. Ah. Please do your own research. <laughs> D-Y-O-R. <laughs> do your own research, okay? And come to your own decision. Not buy, call, sell, call, okay? All right. Any questions you have for me, Celine Or Louis? If... Well, gas Malaysia don't have competitor. Then who's the gas distributor in the West Malaysia? In East Malaysia, you mean? Ah, uh, sorry, East Malaysia. I think it's very fragmented. Uh, like in where Louis stays in Miri, uh, they have uh, we have our own council, local council that actually does it. It's a 
uh, I know so in sub, then, sorry, Sarawak gas here. Yeah, Sarawak gas. Yeah. So I don't think it's listed. It's maybe wholly owned by the Sarawak state government or a private limited or a statutory body. I don't think it's listed though. Let me see. Sarawak. I I I doubt it's listed lah. Or wholly owned by the Sarawak state government. Let's see, let's see. It'll be interesting if it's listed. <laughs> very, very interesting. Oh, now it belongs to Petros. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking because I was thinking like, I, I know that it, 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 it stopped being like private some time ago. Like mm. everything like electric, gas, everything like when yeah. I mean, it became private. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Revenue per year, okay. 1.2 billion. Oh no, this is including the oil exploration and everything. Like. Yeah, everything are not everything parked under this, I think. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah, fragmented. Like, I think there is other than petrol, there's the others as well. Yeah. Like, Actually, yeah. in, in, in Kuching, used to. Survive. Yeah, Petronas Dagangan used to sell the gas. Yeah. In Kuching, we have Shell Timo, uh, Salin. They actually sell the tong. So our tong yellow color one. Oh, ah, our tongue. That's why I ask you what tongue, what tongue color you use. Ah. I saw yellow color in peninsula also. Ah. Yeah, yellow, I think, is either petrol, orange is petron, yellow is usually shell. Oh, ah. why, why do you think they use these colors? Ah? To differentiate their brand. Ah, one, but why do you think they use bright colors? I don't know. Okay, why do you think people go offshore, they wear bright colors? Can be seen. Yes. <laughs> no, serious. It's, there's a science to it, one. That's why the coveralls you see people, uh, when they go out, you don't you don't see a blue, usually la, you don't see a blue coverall la, except Slumberger. La. I don't know why Slumberger put the coveralls blue. A lot. Even like I think I think they are like my old company used to use this very dark green. Yeah. The moment you fall into the sea, very hard to find you already. You know, Louis. Yeah, that's why that's why I don't work anymore. Lot that. <laughs> Yeah. Your cover is green color. The research and rescue come, right? It's like, but if they see a let's say Salim wearing yellow, right? It's like bright yellow. <laughs> they see you very far away. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, Salim? No. Okay, cool. Uh so maybe you can uh take us through a quick summary of the four questions and what, what have you seen in Gas Malaysia? Okay, Gas Malaysia is owned by M MNC. MMC corporate behind and then they they develop and operate or maintain the natural gas like they basically became the middle person between the gas supply and then the consumers and then we see how the industry works like we know who uses most of the gas like electricity you generate electricity you need the gas to generate the electricity then maybe the fmb uh commercial outlets they also need the gas to cook and everything and then uh we see their financial statement is quite stable they are they are profitable and then their asset can have cover their liabilities even their cash flow is like very good mm. <laughs> and then uh well <laughs> They don't have a competitor. We basically compare it with a Thai company, but uh, overall their PE ratio is like very stable throughout. Okay, cool. Uh, just to add one more fact, dividend yield is six point nine percent as of last that one. So you're paying for three ringgit twenty seven as of today, close of today. Uh, PE of about ten point nine, which is eleven, and you have a dividend yield of six point nine percent. So almost double your FD. Uh. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, Louis, conclude. <laughs> All right. So that wraps up today's episode of Financial Audit. So now over to you. Are you like Saline, someone who's new new to buying stocks? What do you think of today's analysis? Comment below. So if you found this episode interesting, do hit like and make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bells on our channel. We'll see you again in our next video. Thanks for tuning in today. Bye bye.